My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Vault of the Void. We're going to be continuing with the Daughter of the Void, Born into Darkness. The Void's corruption only makes her stronger. We're going in on hard. And I'm going to get there. We're going to, we're going to master this character. It's going to be this episode. I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm calling my shot. Masochist, recur two random non-weakness cards. Also, Soul Tie 3 upgrades Sif 2 as well. Uh, wound upgrades its damage as well as vulnerability from 12 to 16 and 2 to 3. Light it up, inflict 6 upgrades to 9 damage, gain overcharge. There's also my father's curse. Inflict corruption damage, recur 1, rebound. And then inflict 16 damage if overcharged, trigger plus 1 times. Interesting. I think... Hmm. Probably going to be running some sort of a discard deck, right? Let's take a diversion. Yeah, we'll take the version. I'm happy with that. Also going to very quickly go and turn back on the program that allows me to constrain mouse because the mouse is not currently constrained. Ultramon, where are you? Well, all right, I can't find that fast enough, so we're actually just going to go in. Uh, during the Void Fight, every time you purge card, block three... Eh, each time the vo uh, Void casts Fury, it'll suffer three weakness and three vulnerability. I like that. Uh, during the Void Fight, the first card played each turn costs two less. Almost certainly going to be going for that one. I'm not confident enough to go for a Blessing of Confidence. I will definitely cleanse this place. So evil though. Interesting. Lose all cards in your backpack and obtain a rare artifact. The interesting thing here is that, like, yes, I lose Diversion, but My Father's Curse is probably the only one of these that I really care about. Let's have a quick look at the map and see if we can see the right kinds of cards on here. Ouch. Whenever Soul Tithe is reduced, block two. Uh, it's really unfortunate I'm not playing the Soul Tithe version of this character right now because all of this is Soul Tithe related. Recur one, discard one, gain one, corruption, rebound. Dance of Darkness is definitely going to be on my parving. Uh, that's going to be difficult. So it looks like max value parting is like going down and across here, up, across. Cutting back down to go across to here. Up for an upgrade, minimum cost. Across, up, curve around. So we miss out on this supernova and this elite. Unless I want to go here and then curve down to the bottom, go up. And then across, which means I miss out on the Dance of Darkness. So I can either miss out on the Super Elite or the Dance of Darkness. We'll figure out effectively by that point whether or not we want to do one or the other. Um, minimum cost here, so that's the duping, right? Yeah, that's the duping. I may need to dupe a card in order to get along here because it really seems like the card rewards that we're finding here... It's not that they're bad. It's just that I really, really, really don't want to do a Soul Tithe deck right now. Uh, because there's the other character that can capitalize on Soul Tithe. That might just be that I'm, like, mentally locked. I need to work through that. That's okay. I, I will trade all of these, though. The rare artifact is gain corruption at the end of turn equal to your leftover energy. That's huge. That's, that's big. That's giant. That's large. That's hefty. Heck, I'd even call it sizable. Oh, no, wait, 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 it's not those. It's up, up, uh, up. Wait, wait. No, we can't go up that far. Need to curl down earlier. Up, up. I mean, we're probably getting a curse here. But also, artifacts for essence. I pray for essence and souls here. And then we get a soul collector over here. So basically, on my parting at this point... One sec. Uh... No, no, no. I'm going to turn these off. There we go. On my pathing at this point, we have the opportunity to get one relic, two relic, three relics, four relics, right? Because we'll probably get the most powerful relic both from the Disheveled Salesman as well as the Soul Collector. So this, this gives us the ability to try and use our relics to help us scale and help us define our deck. Hopefully we get something in these two treasure chests that can actually get us off to a good start though because I'm feeling a little uneven. 
Let's have a look at the deck manager for a second. There's no reason not to put this in something. Yes, I know. I learned. I did it. I read the comments. Seriously, I read every single comment. Do not worry about that. Uh, I might not necessarily have the ability or time to respond to each and every one of them, but I do read every single one. Uh, so yes, I will try and make use of the fact that I can do this. Socket it, then take it back out, then socket it again, and then take it back out again, and then let's socket it one more time just for good luck, and then take it back out again. And then let's go into our first fight. After socketing it again. <laughs> All right, uh, nothing in the deck that I really want to change the orders of there. That's completely fine. Let's go. We'll just target the throat cutter down really early here and then just go, 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 go. You know how it typically works. Uh, happy to cut a Unleash Darkness here. Okay, so we're one from being able to kill the throat cutter. I keep trying to use E to end my turn, but E would be targeting the throat cutter. Uh, one. Urge, and then one down. I mean, I could kill you as well. Yeah, let's do it. So killing another unit in the same turn now prevents any reforms here. I don't know if I ever, like, maybe as I go up through the difficulties, I'll start wanting to leave enemies around for a little longer so that I can get more Voidstone interactions, but at the moment, I'm very much just hastily killing them as quickly as I can. I feel pretty comfortable with that. The unceasing gear is actually, like, really putting in work. It is going to help us scale so much faster if it's uh, played around. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. All of this is really good. So Diversion, obviously, is the card that I just got and turned down. Battle plan here, draw three, discard two. It's draw neutral. But also, have a look at the cards in the base deck here. Upgrading Unleashed Darkness becomes discard for gain one corruption. And there will be a lot of cards that we'll encounter uh, that will also upgrade for some discard effects similar to that. There's also Discovery, just probe one. Probe gets the right card at the right time. I'm taking the battle plan. Heck, I might even upgrade it. Well, why would I upgrade it right now, right? It doesn't, like, the... I have nothing that I get benefits from discarding yet. So let's upgrade a Unleashed Darkness. I'm probably even going to leave the deck as it currently stands. Get past a single block there. Hmm. I'll take the poor corruption on that turn. We're stunned. Let's see, not decrease in hand size. Stun is lose energy equal to your stun value. Okay, that's fine. Um. Ten eight. Okay, we're getting pretty close to the point that the 11 is an insta-kill on that target. Incoming damage is 13 this turn. 15, unfortunately. Yikes. Okay, so we're not going to be able to perfect anymore because of that. Double Cursed Shield easily. Then... I just want to Void's Kiss. I'll be taking out just the Blightwood right now. That's fine. Right, and then next turn, unleash, unleash on either side. I'm gonna go past that cursed shield and purge this unleash. One damage worth here. Unfortunately, that is going to lower the amount of essence I get from this fight, which really didn't want that to happen. What with the whole, I have an essence shop. In fact, two essence shops on my pathing. Okay. Interesting. Opportunity, 50% corruption, Saltire 2, but Threshold 4, another 50% corruption. Wait, hang on. So, I, I guess it just increases your corruption as you play it. But didn't this used to be zero cost? Maybe I'm thinking of something else. 
There's also Flesh and Blood here, Purge to gain Corruption 1. It's also an attack. It's worth noting that we don't have any attacks in the deck yet. So some of the enemies that say, you know, when in, when targeted by an attack, nothing in our deck currently targets them. There's also the reinforcements here. Gain three Volatile Smash cards and Expel. I can purge it in order to get one Volatile Smash. And Volatile Smash is deal eight damage two times. Rage 25%. It's also Volatile. Um, I'll say Flesh and Blood... I'm just kind of leave that there, I think, for a bit. Let's get the Jinx Leprechaun down first. <sighs> Void's Kiss, Hold a Cursed Shield, and Dark Purge. Actually, it might just be Void's Kiss, Hard Purge. It's also worth noting that sifting a card does count as discarding it. You can see it says discard a card from your deck. Um, I believe the tooltip was updated, actually, after I last discussed it. And that gives us a lot more flexibility as this character. I can upgrade all of these cards, and then anything that says sift can be extra corruption for me consistently. Yeah, the damage on those is so low that I'd actually prefer to just go for the full energy. So that I get the five from the unseizing gear. One, two. I mean, 15 is significant, though. Okay. I'm going to hold on to one cursed shield here just in case. Also, hold on to the spirit shield definitely for the next turn. The incoming damage is going to be 14, 16 total. Just got discard. Um, I guess this one. Take out the attacker, and then we've got the easy kill next turn. Perfect. Also, looks like we are currently working on building a black void stone with our runic power. Excited for that. Hmm. Actually, I might end up fixing the deck in these merchants. Well, that helps. It's going to make getting the expensive artifact significantly less likely. This Null and Void is actually one of my favorite cards at the moment in this class. Inflict Corruption Damage, Sift two random weakness cards, this is on the upgrade, and then also Sift two. So I can use that to just discard, unleash darknesses and such. And also, it gets rid of weakness cards, and that matters. How far are we from the place? So one, two, three, four... The amount of essence I'll probably gather in that area is going to be about 300. So what? I go down 261 from this point. I'd be able to buy still the, the middle relic, probably. I'm going to take this. If we end up with a relic in this area that I can't buy, that I really wanted to buy, then my bad. But that'll be a learning experience at the time, right? Infecti. Their infection cards will feed their strength. That's fine. Um, I'm going to get the null and void into the deck at this point. Cutting and unleash darkness. Um, actually, oh my god, we even have the upgrade that I want for it. Null and Void. Get a, get a, get a green Void Stone. Why don't you get, uh, why don't you get rigged? Put them to the top of the deck constantly. Even in the cycles. Mm. One, two, three, four. Increase its max HP by 10%. Nothing I can really do about that. In this first cycle, I'm probably just going to be powering up. Ah, I didn't use my hero power. Sorry, my spell. I should have done. Mm -hmm. Nine? Is nine enough to start attacking here? I'm really going to want two of them down in the same turn. 
I have 10 incoming next turn. I'd end with one energy. I'm guaranteed to draw two shields. Fine. When I said I'm guaranteed to draw two shields, I was kind of hoping that I'd draw something else as well. I'm going to need to start finding some of the things that allow me to defend by discarding. Because those are going to be important. Ah, dang. Okay, so... Whenever I draw an infection card, all creatures with this ability gain 2 AP. That's going to be a problem. Thankfully, this is the only infection card I'm going to draw in this cycle because... Two of them now just got moved because of the Sift 2 random weaknesses. And then I'm going to Sift a Unleash and, in fact, another Unleash as well. So you can see I just went past those two infections there also. Uh, incoming damage next turn is seven. I'm going to drop one more shield. The enemies have been very generously deciding not to all attack on the same turn, and I deeply appreciate it, enemies, but uh, for your own sakes, you should probably start giving it a little bit of a whap. Oh, that's really annoying. Either of these, like, literally drawing these four cards is the only way I wasn't going to be able to defend this turn. <laughs> so rude. <laughs> ah. Uh, one. Wait, if I purge this, 28. Yeah, okay, we can get a kill. Two, three. Get our Black Void Stone. I'm going to leave the curse for the start of the next combat. There's another upgrade point for us. Uh, it really does feel like I want to throw all the upgrade points on the Unleashed Noctuses for a while so that I can set up the ability to discard for some benefit. And also just increase their damage, right? It's not bad in that either. Uh, battle plan. Maybe I should have upgraded battle plan there. I don't even have anything I really want to put the Black Void Stone in at the moment. I don't want to put it in those Unleashed Darknesses because I'll discard them 100% of the time, so... Gosh, I actually may just put it in a Cursed Shield for the moment. Really hope this relic helps to find us. Kusha is immune to vulnerable, can also heal from bleed. There's nothing in my sideboard here that looks super relevant. I mean, obviously not wound at this point. Okay. Happy going to it. When starting a turn with 20 or more corruption, place a volatile soul tax in your hand. Soul Tax is inflict 50% corruption damage. Soul Tithe 1, Volatile. So each turn I would be increasing my corruption by one more, but also dealing 50% of my damage easily. It's also a free card that I get to play every single turn, which which matters. Um, I may end up including some cards in this deck that uh, gain Soul Tithe and other cards that lose Soul Tithe. Um... We curve Soul Tithe really quickly. I'm just trying to figure out whether or not it's the Tax Ledger or the Emergency button at the start of each battle round. That is to say, each round in battle, right? Um, tick this value up by one. When it reaches four, all creatures will suffer two vulnerable, two weak, and two slow resets after each fight. Now, why does this seem really interesting? That is because I spend my first three rounds just powering up. And then if they suddenly all became vulnerable, weak, and slow... By the time I'm powerful, I would have the ability to capitalize on it. There's also the Dead Man's Drop. Each time your discard is reshuffled, block 10. And if we end up discarding and drawing a lot of cards, this works as well. I, I don't know if I necessarily have like a, a read of this as in like, oh, this one's definitely the most valuable. This one's the least valuable in the circumstance. Honestly, Tax Ledger seems like it's probably the best one here for us at this point. But I'm going to take the Emergency button because I've never taken it before. And I would like to experiment. I'm going to hold on to that Cursed Shield here as well. I'd like to perfect this fight if possible. One, two... Got him. Huh? 
50. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. Now I'm going to have to block three times in this turn. Oh my god, I actually can block three times in this turn. Never mind, it's totally okay. Hard purge the rest of the hand. Enemies attacking next turn. Fine. Battle round four. Hey, you're not going to be vulnerable, but you're weak. Corruption goes by that and that. Thankfully, the enemy isn't attacking next turn. I can just throw out another hit. Fear and vulnerable. Is the enemy attacking next turn? They are, but it's not a huge attack. Not specifically going to hold out for another... I should have, I should have, I should, I should, yeah, I should have held out looking for another block. That's my bad. Or rather, sorry, held that block in hand. Ow. Did not need to take that damage. One, two, three, purge. Block, and then I'm going to hold this final, purge a shield, and then just attack two times next turn for the kill. Adios, Bruce. Sayonara, bud. It's a crippling potion. Cursed item shows us. Every seventh attack card will trigger an additional time. That's actually really interesting. We have no attack cards. So, no. I could drain the item in order to get a void as well as eight souls. Or I could just destroy it for the three. I think I'm going to destroy for the three. I think by the time I get to the Soul Collector, I'll still have something to give them. Ah, Treasure Goblin. Okay, is there anything in this deck that is way too slow? I mean, the Treasure Goblin doesn't attack, so I'm going to cut a couple of uh, advanced shields there, add wound, power draw, second chance. The thing is, the enemy can just straight up run away. So I, do, I do need to actually attack them a bunch here as well. Uh, wound, purge two. Come on, don't run, don't run, don't run. No, it's trying to flee! Why are these the next two cards? They're the damage! Uh... Oh, that's so maddening. I get the perfect fight, and I got a decent amount of essence there, but if, if we had a more aggressive deck, we could have gotten significantly more essence and felt a lot better about it. Uh, this Ghost Shield, this Curse Shield, rather, also has Dane Corruption 2 when we actually play it. I'm going to upgrade that. We've also got Ghost on it. It seems like a really good upgrade at this point. Is there any argument we're no longer going to that Soul Collector? I don't think there is. So you missed out on the bottle of whiskey. Your hand size is increased by one. That hurts. Uh, at the start of each turn, block three for each unit debuff you're suffering from. No, you'll start all fights with your energy at its maximum. That's not bad, actually, considering it's synergy with the unceasing gear, uh, especially. Now, I also picked up a yellow void stone, which I would be happy to just slot into a cursed shield. Let's also make sure that we go and skew the deck back the other direction. Um, we cut... Three cursed shields in order to do that. Lose corruption equals its cost. Gain corruption equals its loss. Uh, not huge on that. Um, corpse beast. It will get stronger every turn. As will we. After each combat, you'll always find a potion. That's a lot of potions is the thing. However... No, Fractal Feather is also a huge amount of block if I want it. Battle plan? I mean... 
rage for the rest of the turn all attack cards deal more damage can be stacked additively so that does nothing for me as well right so it's definitely fractal or it's the keg i think it's fractal with the amount of like i'm probably going to rely on cursed shields to be my block core for a very long time so making the second of them block an extra three is pretty good Start your turn, we'll gain AP2, fine. Let's get Null and Void. Discard those two. I'm just gonna get a casual five corruption at the end of that turn. Ooh, you love to see it. Cursed Shield, Cursed Shield, get that full block, Void's Kiss, purge this. Um, is it time to start attacking yet? I mean. Surely it's always time to start attacking against this enemy, right? I don't want them to get too... Too far away from me. But purging is actually significantly more energy here as well. Not energy, sorry, it's significantly uh, more powerful. Okay. Enemy got made vulnerable. Okay, I need to put some shields into the next cycle, so I'll play those two. Then I am going to cycle, dropping the unleash. Double attack. Okay, so vulnerability is working with this. I was worried after I saw the rage was only working with attacks that vulnerability might also only be working with attacks, which would completely invalidate the taking of the emergency button. Uh, but thankfully, that's not the case. Spirit Shield's a great draw right now. Enemy is attacking next turn, but I might be just going ham here. Yeah. Hopefully I get a decent amount of souls out of this fight. Three. Okay. That could be everything we need. Come on, Soul Collector. Mask of Red Juice. Actually, I don't want that. After the second card is played in a turn, gain 50% Rage. What would that do for me? Uh, Bladed Staff. Death Strike no longer has a minimum reduction of one after triggering, meaning zero cost cards won't reduce it by one. Oh, bugger. If I had taken the Ledger, right? The Volatile Soul Taxes would be zero cost Death Strike attacks. So if I had anything in the deck that gave me any death strike, then the bladed staff would just make all of those hit two times, all of those soul taxes. I missed out on a great combo right there. The first attack card played in each combat will be cloned. I don't play attack cards. Stop, 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 stop. Oh. Come on. Helm of Focus, you're no longer affected by creature abilities, taunt and evasive. Well. Let's choose a card to dupe possibly here. I could dupe another Null and Void happily. I'm not against the idea of duping a Cursed Shield just to get a ghost gem that I have the ability to take out of it and put in something else if I want. Um. I mean, two Cursed Shields with Ghost Gems in is actually like a... It's a its a build. It's a real thing. Two Null and Voids in the opening hand, though, just discarding all of the things that we need. That's a thing, too. Oh! I should have just changed the... Oh, my God. I should have changed the gems around before duping and then done it afterwards so I could have gotten the Ghost Gem as well as dupe the Null and Void. That's 100% what we should have done here. Oh, uh, my bad. My bad. Wait a second. Can I still do that? No. Oh, I can only suffer a void to dupe that right now. Okay, if I dupe the common card... That, nope, never mind. Seven souls to duplicate. I imagine that's... Yeah, because I had... Because I have gems in the card, it costs me more for it to duplicate. Maybe I just duplicate the Unleashed Darkness that's already upgraded with souls here. 
literally just as an upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Um, sidestep has an appeal. I mean, I want to be floating energy anyway. I'm going to take an upgraded sidestep here. I'm going to go to the deck manager. I'm going to disclude a Cursed Shield and an Unleashed Darkness, taking the upgraded sidestep as well as the upgraded Unleashed Darkness. Um, I'm not really going to be running Soul Tide at the moment. But other than that, I think I'm pretty set for the Guardian fight. Yes, yes, yes. Each time you draw a card that isn't a Void, you'll suffer two damage. If you draw a Bane, you'll suffer an additional three damage. Not a giant fan of that, but oh well. Nine corruption. Not a bad end of the turn right there. Single curse shield for the full block. I don't have a no. I, I have a pretty defensive hand upcoming, so I can I can push that. In fact, I'm also going to continue my scaling at the moment rather than deal any damage there. I think ultimately this will contribute more damage. Okay, that sidestep's great there, but... Actually, no, we're, we're fine, right? Sidestep and Cursed Shield, Cursed Shield. So we'll Cursed Shield first, then sidestep, so we get the energy out of it. Cursed Shield again, full block. Uh, Void's Kiss and then double attack. I can totally see a Void's Kiss double attack here. We've got a Spirit Shield in the next hand as well. So I drew a Bane. I <laughs> did not want to draw a Bane. Uh, Spirit Shield. I'm going to double purge these two. Use Null and Void in order to purge more Banes. Okay, there's no Banes remaining in the deck at this point. That's great. Um, we are getting to the point that I want to turn around and kill the Priest, though. Incoming damage next turn is 12. I'm going to go for one Unleashed Darkness. Maybe two, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go for two still. I'm gonna go for three. That was that too much? That was too much, wasn't it? <sighs> yeah, that was too much. 41. I mean it's good damage. May even be able to set up for the kill next turn. Okay, so we definitely can't kill this turn. However, two, three. We can still set up pretty comfortably. And now we are very close. We're like one turn striking distance. 44, 33. Yeah, we've got... No! I purged the wrong card. 45, 33. Hang on. So, wait. If I purge Unleash and then use this to purge to... I'm not going to be able to do it, am I? It'd be 48. And then I would purge for two more Corruption. So I'd have 50 Corruption. And then 75% of 50 is... Uh, 25, I don't know how the game rounds. 25 is 37.5. So 48 and 37 is one short. Okay, here's my hope that the game rounds up. Come on. It does! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Now I'm never going to forget that. 
We did it. Two upgrade points. 100%. Oh my god. Uh, I want all of these Unleashed Darknesses to say gain one corruption on them. Okay. Whew. We're on to the second map. Uh, recur the top cards. Pretty useful. There's another copy of Null and Void. Sift 3. Reduce soul time by one for each dark... Uh, sorry, weakness discarded. Uh, upgrades to also have purge or discard on this card, triggering another sift. Interesting. Um, down here we have Cursed Blade. Inflict six damage. Rage. Okay, so that would literally just be for the... 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 The, the, the relic, you mean? Um, add... Two to three volatile copies of the next played attack to hand. God, the ledger would have worked so well right now. I'm actually pretty sad about that. If this card has a void stone, trigger plus two. If it has a void stone, trigger plus two. I mean, black void stone does nothing. I mean, it's it's gain three overcharge for zero energy in the purple void stone. Twelve block for zero energy. Green void stone does nothing. Blue void stone is so it's zero energy. Draw three, discard three, which is actually just the spell that we just got, and then red void stone does nothing as well for us. Um, there's the diversion that I've been looking for discard to block seven and trigger a void stone i'm looking for basically anything that allows me to block by discarding it uh, there's a taste of blood over here with the player one vulnerable i'll have the ability to remove that if i wanted to with a shield at the very end not awful either expel all darkness heal for expel i don't really feel confident about my card set so i kind of want to hit treasures to try and help me fix that That looks like my kind of most resource path that I can find here. There's Let's Pray as well. Draw three, discard three. I think I need to stay on curses for a bit though. I don't think I have enough things in the deck that want to be discarded to use the other one. Actually, do I? Maybe. We'll assess over the course of this fight. Easy voids. Okay, so I'll probably even leave the Cursed Shield in hand here. Got to spend a couple turns in the early here scaling. Haunted. Void stone powers won't trigger whilst haunted. Ticks down by one each time I play a card with stone. Um, I mean, pretty much every stone that I can play, I really want to trigger, so. But. Cursed Shield into Sidestep. I could take one damage here if I wanted. But I'd like to avoid it. My pain, you're suffering. Add two banes to the discard. Sure, you're dying. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want you to do that to me. Two super simple blocks right there. Okay, I need to take this opportunity to kill the the deep. I rely on my draw giving me the block here as well. I think it's reasonable to rely on that here. It's fine. Cast shield, cast shields. Got it. One immediate kill, two immediate kills. I'll hold on to this. Just go for the bloated in the next round. 
Perfect. Literally. Now, I'm going back over to the backpack and upgrading battle plan. That should have been in the deck a little bit ago. Glad to finally have it in here. And I'm also going to remove the void stone from that. So we've got two red void stones that I don't have any reason to use in any way at the moment. Self-inflicted agony. Threshold four at the start of your turn. Gain death. Oh my god. That would be the card to make me do death strike. That would be it. 100%. If I saw that early on, I, I would build, like, all death strike. Um... So we just got shown some slow and some weak on a wither shield. I'm not against just investing into a wither shield, right? Um, having a couple single large block cards in the deck. It feels like that's something increasingly over the course of this I'm going to need. But also every upgrade to a cursed shield is just two extra corruption on the defense. I'm putting the Wither Shield in the deck. I just don't want to get ruined because I go to an enemy and I'm not prepared for the amount of frenzy that they initially have. And it looks like I'm going for this Wither Shield again at the very end as well. So that will, with two upgraded Wither Shields, actually, I'm not even going to have the opportunity to upgrade that one. Shame. Um, but if I did have two upgraded Wither Shields, I could really see how that would form the block core for a deck uh, a lot of the time. Unload, Pymite in the Pyre. Okay, so this one can be pretty bad. I don't know if I want to put a supernova in here just for the sake of this, but four turns, and then I'd have to nuke them. I could see myself putting an energy potion in here. I'm not going to. Really hope I got that one right. Yeah, 32 damage incoming because this enemy is going for the burning, then burning, burning and vulnerable, burning, and then this enemy just attacks. So I can't even prevent this enemy this turn from doing the amount of damage it plans to. This fight, like the first turn is super variable because sometimes the Pyamite on the left wants to attack. And when it's on the left and it wants to attack, it's three damage in the first round, right? And then the other two put burning on you, right? And the burning is suffer damage equal to burning at the start of your turn. Purging cards reduces burning by one. Um, and the Pyamites themselves have frenzy equal to one plus your burning value. Uh, and when they do it in that order, first round, uh, smooth. In this order, I'm already like 32 damage on turn two that I have at the block. So, ow. Just ow. Let's... Uh, Battle plan. I'm going to get rid of those two Unleashed Darknesses. Then throw that Unleashed Darkness. And as much as I want to target the Pyamites here, like, I just do not see the ability to do so. By the time we get powerful enough to take out a Pyamite, we will be powerful. Like, it'll be round four, and I'll be powerful enough to take out the Pyre itself instead. Um, but I guess at that point, the Pyamites are still the one dealing the most damage. So yeah, let, 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 let's get started on the rightmost Pyamite. That's almost always going to be the correct one to kill first, just because of this, the fact that it can Scorch and then attack. So let's get going. Let's get going. on. Nice! Wrong card. Uh, all the cards immediately moved. Uh, I was trying to click two Unleashed Darknesses there, as you might expect. Ow. My health. <laughs> uh, I wanted to have some health, but then game said no. Uh, I probably should have purged more cards that turn. We're starting to get to the point that no matter how many cards I purge, I'm just not going to be able to meet the requirements of the game. I, I would absolutely love to be able to purge right now. 26 and 26. There we go. Only 18 damage. 51 incoming though. <laughs> 
Yikes. Everyone is weak and slow at the moment as well, so it's not like the Wither Shield is suddenly going to save us from a huge amount. Although it's probably what I played this time. Okay, we got him back in control. Eight incoming. That one to the left is already a kill. Great. It's almost a kill to do the other one. We'll curse a shield, curse a shield. It's not a kill yet. Purge two more cards here. Hey, now that's a kill by itself. And then the 44 on the other side. Don't want to focus on that. I mean, I could double focus the Pyre this turn. Cop my 15 next turn. Actually, that seems really good. Okay. Here's exactly the circumstance where I would like to be able to block. I'm one off being able to win. <laughs> Ouch. And there's our kill. We get an upgrade point at least still. Invest that one quickly and wisely. Yeah, I love the extra null and void up here. I still have to go. We don't play many zero cost cards in this deck, so Berserker is not really going to get that Berserk at us. But it is attacking. I could wither. I could wither shield, but there's no real good reason to do so. I think here. Yeah, because the incoming damage is six this turn, and I already block that by well, any number of different ways. I already like easily block that. There we go. That step will do it. Hey, boys, kiss. Boys, kiss. I'll be playing three Cursed Shields next turn happily, getting some extra corruption whilst doing so. One, Deafening Shout, this creature will gain... No, 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 it's Deafening Shout is Cripple 2 and Taunt 2. Gonna get a head start on that Berserker. Next round is Battle Round 5, I believe. So we get to inflict him. Oh my god, look at that battle plan right there. Battle plan? More like battle... Damn! Why did I purge my defense? I meant to play that. Rhapsody, why did you do that? <laughs> that might have been one of the worst moves you were capable of making at that time. Why did you so enthusiastically immediately do it? Good gosh. Ouch. Okay, we're gonna Rune Priest on the field. Uh... Uh, purge that. All right, another runic pillar down. These rune priests are majority just going to be buffing, so. Oh, never mind, they decided to attack just to prove me wrong, I'm certain. And this is an easy kill now. Goodbye, Rune Priest. Hmm. Null and Void here. Another Pyamite fight. That actually was better, easier than I thought it was going to be. 
Let's put an exploding bottle in here. Make it even, even easier. Ooh, that cursed shield looks good next turn. Get past that. Um, this is 17 block by itself next turn, so that plus the cursed shield already has us covered. That's my bad. Should have played these in the opposite order. Whoops. I think I should just purge three cards this turn. Significantly decrease the amount of burning that I have. And by significantly decrease, I mean uh, remove. Remove all of. There is no more. Okay. I'm fine with taking five here. The amount of burning we now have is... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I think is the correct uh, terminology to be using here. It's an uh-oh. Uh-oh. Love to be discarding things for block on that turn as well. Okay. I think my best play is killing both of those and decreasing the incoming damage next turn so that I have a turn's worth of respite. When I say a turn's worth of respite, it's not like we really got that much out of it. Uh, yikes. We still have the spirit shield for next turn. 39, 30. So I can take out another Pyamite here. And in fact, I think I just have to. Double Cursed Shield is the easiest choice. Hmm. I'm going to purge the extra one there and then... Again, go for a Pyamite, increasing the damage significantly. There's the Pyamite on the Pyre right. Wither Shield's got our full block this turn. We can set up some weakness. Well, I mean, the weakness and vulnerability is not going to matter at all, right? All right, we're good. I say we're good. Look at our health total. We're not great, but we're alive. We could certainly be more dead. How about that? <laughs> the most successful way that I can explain myself right now. And we envision not being as dead as we could. That's an upgrade point. Another uh, upgrade on Null and Void. Happily. Also going to... Cycle that into the deck. Honestly, it feels like the two Voids Kisses right now just want to be block. I'll take a Null and Void. And then a Cursed Shield. And then for another Cursed Shield, I think I'm just going to throw in a Void Stone. I really didn't want to, but it looks like I'm going to have to rest here. Just going to pray for life and move on not dwell on it too much because I'll get sad. Uh, no healing that I can do here. That's fine. We fought the Berserkers just before and it wasn't a huge problem. It was going to be even less of a problem if I played the turns correctly. But now that we've made those mistakes, we know what mistakes to not to make. Uh, you see... Just 
give me all the corruption. I mean, the, there's more damage coming out of the runic pillar right now, so. There you go. Uh, I'm also going to drop the sidestep. I think the double, double cursed shield is an easy play next turn for us. Another null and void here, but it's not really discarding ideal targets anymore. I guess I just discard anything that's not block. Oops. Played the wrong card. Uh, brain, please <laughs> cooperate with me. I promise I'll be better. Oh, I don't even get to play the null and void right now. I gotta leave it in hand. It's too many good cards. That is to say, too many good cards to play it alongside. Okay, get both those out. Kill the mainline target. Leave a spirit shield in hand for the possibility of needing a giant block this turn. I've been really, really impressed with the emergency button. Specifically for this character. It, uh, it, it really, really impresses me. Battle plan discarding those two. Then I'm going to discard that with the hero power. Then null and void. And this is like, I love this touch. But null and void, sift, discard a card from the deck. Oftentimes a game would not allow this to work with an empty deck. They'd just be like, you have no cards in there to discard. So <laughs> nice try, nerd. But here, it generates it. That's just such a kind thing. You know? Really, really appreciated. I like kind of like design in games that in circumstances of uncertainty breaks in the player's favor. I I tend to believe that is a good way to design. And many of the things that I've enjoyed have been designed based largely, not exclusively, but largely uh, around that in those circumstances. I'm also going to hold the sidestep because it's possible I just do not get any defense next turn with our deck as it currently stands. Okay, this is fine because then I want to use the Wither Shield. One. Right? Okay. I was I not gonna do enough damage to kill Oh Fortitude. Oh, it yeah, maybe I just wasn't counting the fortitude value the character had. In fact, I imagine that's definitely definitely what was going on. Um. Okay, so when while I was doing that selecting, you can see I clicked. And then I was expecting the cards all to shuffle off to the left, but then they jumped up instead. So I discarded another different card. Um, which isn't necessarily how I was expecting that one to go down. All right. We got our perfect victory. It only took us a billion years. <laughs> uh, Cursed Blade. Oh, Dolus. Dolus. Okay, so I'm putting Supernova, Second Chance, Wound, Unload. Put all those in the deck and cut. Unleash, unleash, and defend, defend. Seems good. Let's jump in. Because Dolus is going to randomize the cost of our cards anyway, so we might as well get good costs. That is Crystal Lake Hand-Me-Down. 
Crystal Lake hand-me-down. That's got to be a reference to something. It's so specific and doesn't seem related to an axe in a way that, like... Hmm, crystal Lake hand-me-down. Do I know anything that refers to a Crystal Lake? Maybe, like, the, the second arc of, uh, of... Of... Or rather, the second season second area of of adventure time balance maybe there's also the possibility that it's like a like a knockoff excalibur kind of situation but it's an axe hmm. uh pickled hand third time you purge each turn increases your energy by two instead of one that's actually quite useful for us as well and seer's eye gives us the ability to see each fight's enemies as well as have the first turn of stealth first turn of stealth gives us the ability to really start scaling before we start hitting enemies so this is actually like mm, very 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 good i'm gonna take the pickled hand because i feel like i'm pretty much always desperate for energy Some easy null and voids out there. I'm going to use a battle plan. Give the shield for the weakness as a setup. And then just purge those. Don't really want them. Um, I'm also going to get past that sidestep. Because unless it comes in at zero cost, it's not that good. Okay. <laughs> wow. Really? Just really didn't want to upgrade the cost of that supernova, eh? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, here, I think I'd actually just prefer the energy. So you can see we've got the two null and voids here, and if they could sift to defend me, life would be so easy. But alas... At least we get four block. Or rather, sorry, at least we get all but four blocked. And then... Second chance. Easy. There's a potion of stealth for us. Taxidermist, holy grenade, unholy creation. This is fine. This is fine, as long as I, like, I purge out my hand pretty much at the end of every single turn, so should not be an issue. I'm going to quickly exit to the menu before going back into this fight, because I forgot to reform my deck after the end of the Dolus fight. So let's, it was two unupgraded Unleashed Darknesses and two unupgraded uh, Shields in there as well. Because that's going to matter. I wouldn't have done it if it didn't. Okay. We just got past a lot of our defensive cards. I say this because now I'm worried. Get a point of overcharge for the next turn. Immediately dissipates. No reason to have gotten that. Hmm. So null and void definitely goes out. Just discard those two and then... Yes. Purge the... How many purges do I have to get? Three if I want to go to full energy, but I don't need to do that this turn. I'm going to double play that, actually, and then just purge one more time and attack. What do I just purge this? Yeah, I'll purge this. Incoming damage this turn is 20. We have a spirit shield in the next hand, so we already have an auto block. Great. Gotta hit him with the null and void. 
Thankfully, that also got past two Banes for me. Gosh, there are more Banes in the deck. I should have just gotten past those. Wow. Bad play on my part. I'm going to remove another one of them then. I could, I could just exhaust all of these. I'm doing it. I think we're getting now to the end of the scaling that I need to do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, I'm going to play one curse shield. This is now an unholy creations kill. This one's not a kill on the other side. But it gets close. One more easy kill. I would love to have that battle plan in hand. But I'm going to take this turn to refuel. Those two banes, then null and actually hang on. Let's remove that, then discard that. So null and void is by itself a kill. Wow, really? Those two banes are both left still. Yeah, I have to get past them. We're in control of this fight now. We escaped it. Um, I mean, I should leave block in the deck. Give me something to do. I feel like this fight was well handled, if uh, maybe a bit longer than it needed to be, just because it took me a while to figure out what I was going to do. You can see the enemy is currently trying to attack for a billion damage. Approximately one billion damage. That's what this number says. See all those? That's a billion. I know. It's a mind-bogglingly large number. It's our perfect fights. Merchants. Yes, merchants is still deeply important to me. There's a diversion. Inflict nine, nine damage X times. X is equal to the target's frenzy value. Upgrades to be 14 X times. So what? Sometimes the target will have... What? Three? Frenzy, it's probably like a reasonable read. For, I mean, th this this is a sideboard card, right? This is a card that you include when you know the enemy is going to have a bunch of Frenzy. Um, I'm just going to take my defense and get the heck out of here. Speaking of, first shield, drop that, put the diversion in. Uh, I'm also going to cut the block from the diversion there. Or rather, block from the other card and pop it into the diversion. So now that diversion, when I discard it, also gives me 11 block. Okay. There's also one more diversion upcoming. I'd like to find another block for it. Assassin Knight Priest. These enemies scale pretty quickly. I'm going to make him skip that first turn. Or rather, they specifically don't scale. It's just the damage that is dealt scales. Let's throw a Unleash as well. And then this can just be... So it's Actually, it's 100% on each of you. So that's the buffs. That's if I could kill really quickly. I can't, so I don't want to do that. That's the middle ground, and then that's the end kill. So I, I focus on the assassin first, I believe, here. Hmm. I'm going to keep the Cursed Shield around for the next turn. Right. 
So it still said threat incoming being 28, despite the fact that I was skipping the first turn. So immediately I thought, wait a second, I'm not skipping the first turn. I have to have a plan in hand for blocking. Um, but that wasn't the case. So whoops, my bad on that. Uh, it still works out. Maybe I should have used the wither there at the end. Okay, I can use Null and Void to block for the last if I really desperately wanted to here. It's upcoming in the path. I'm not going to a natural store in the upcoming path. It's fine, so I don't do that. Ow. Thankfully, the enemy taunted me, but I do not care. I could not care less. Let's discard the diversion here and uh, defense. Get rid of the battle plan, and then we can use a wither shield. Nice. All right, we're back on board. We're back to feeling pretty comfy. Can we get past the spirit shield for the next turn? No, I just want to guarantee some block in the next turn. If that's what I can do, that's what I can do. Thank heck it's not what I have to do though. Corruption up at 48. So now we kind of just nuke targets. Um, uh, scrap that daze, don't need it. 48. Crouch. 49, so we can, up, we can eventually get it to 50. I'm just gonna go for the defensive play here. And actually I'm gonna split my damage. I don't find it extremely unlikely we'll be able to kill both of them next turn. One, two, purge. Number one, number two, got him. Dragon Mother inflicts burning and vulnerable, limits the amount of block that can be gained from any individual source. So that kind of downgrades the value. So I, I think it limits them to six as well. So it kind of downgrades the value of the Wither, but Wither is also still slow and weak. So it's it's like damage prevention for the next turn as well. It, it's a fancy delayed block, if you want to really refer it to it that way. I, and you know what? Defending is really uh, fancy killing an enemy because in both ways, they don't damage you. Uh, those Those comparisons kind of fall down pretty quickly, but... I just don't think we are going to worry for this fight. Leap Cursed Shield in hand here, definitely. And then we get to Null and Void our way through. Ooh, actually, Spirit Shield probably should have been cut, but at the uh, at the pre-step. That would have made a lot of sense. Good draw on the Wither Shield this turn. Um, I'm happy to lose those two. I like the Wither Shield for the block next turn as well, but three Cursed Shields just gets the block easily here. Twenty incoming, but we have Overcharge 2 as well as Cursed Shield, Cursed Shield. Let's try a Diversion and then just Purge for the Null and Void's sake. Love it. Do you 
even got sidestep in this hand. Making it all real easy on me, game. I appreciate it. I am now going to throw away defense because I believe we are in the home stretch. I should really be targeting to try and kill this turn or next turn. Something like that. I'd, I'd be looking for something like that. All right, Soul Collector, we got 22 going in. Okay. Which is Blade. The first attack card played each turn will rebound. I Game! Game! <laughs> I'm not using attack cards. Regal monocle when applying a debuff to an enemy not suffering from debuffs. Double its value. Uh... How's that work with the emergency button? A debuff to an enemy not suffering any debuffs. Double its value. So is it the first debuff? So in this case... Uh, emergency button would apply for vulnerable. That's not bad. Leftovers. Items value will be set to the energy total of the cards in hand at the end of the fight. Gain delayed block equal to that next fight. That doesn't seem that impactful. Um, I'm kind of down to take the regal monocle and then walk. Go to the dark idol because here I can offer for a uncommon artifact. I could also get a rare artifact, but... I've seen a lot of rare artifacts this run that have been uh, attacks, attack related, and I don't want that. But also, obviously, I don't want to have to purge through a bunch of voids in my own deck. Fine. Yellow void stones also grant four delayed block. I mean, if I had another yellow void stone, I'd feel a bit better about it. I'm gonna throw that one on the null and void just because I don't really have any other target for it at the moment. Every sixth block card played will trigger an additional time. Seems exactly what we want. Okay. Battle plan for the easy discards there. The enemy's just naturally attacking next turn as well, so with the shield's great. Now I have to decide whether or not I play this two times for four corruption or if I purge it so that I get full energy next turn as well as... I mean, it's two energy to purge it. Or, sorry, it's two corruption plus to purge it, but four energy plus to purge it. So, fine, I'm going to purge it. Also going to throw another Unleash Darkness. We don't want to hit the Beast of Malice until we really want to hit the Beast of Malice. Hit me again for every point of damage inflicted to this creature. It will raise its hit me again value by one. When it reaches 25, it'll Frenzy will increase by one resets at the start of the turn. So we can do like weenie little hits here in the early, but that's about it. Hmm. <laughs> Gotta love that. The exact value short of giving the enemy a frenzy there. Okay, it's definitely the double cursed shield this turn. And probably hold the spirit shield for the next turn. Ah, no, I upgraded the null and void too much. Okay, never mind. We can't use null and void anymore. Twenty-two. That'll add to twenty-two. Mm. I think I'm actually fine. Just hard blocking. Okay, that's interesting. 
Yeah, the enemy already had one weak and one slow from my prior application of the Wither Shield, and they got four vulnerable. So yeah, that is that is how that works. It's not like, you know, all of these at the same time, that is to say, sorry, down here, all of these, the vulnerable weak and slow trigger at the same time, and therefore are all double hit. And the reason that's super important as well is because it means if I use like a Wither, for example, with the Regal Monocle, it doesn't apply too slow, too weak. Um, that, that would be very powerful. Like, uh, I, I think it would be fair to say kind of problematically powerful. Perfect. Then one more on these. I'll throw out the diversion, making sure that I get a good amount of block. One, two. Incoming is 60. We've got more turns of vulnerability. Purging a cursed shield. We're going for lethal next turn. 231 damage suddenly done in a single turn right there. You love it. Taste of blood. Inflict damage equal to block and block four. It's just a gem if nothing else. I'll take that. Oh, we found last time that it was quite useful that I uh, gave them all the uh, the willies to begin with here. That's right, exploding bottle. Try and do it again. And it seems underwhelming. One, two, three. Throw the null and void. Same way. I mean, 12 Corruption at the end of turn one, as well as five energy is not bad. If I didn't have the five energy, maybe I'd feel a bit different about that, but I do have it, so it's, everything's fine. Trigger that block for the next turn. Um, should be fine. I've got the Band of Resilience upcoming, so I've got a double block upcoming. I'm happy to fish a little before I use it, though. Just in case we found something really good. I'll double trigger that one. I think I should purge another one for the energy here. It's just very, very low on energy that turn. Back up to six of six. This is not going to be a good blocking turn. This one's gonna feel a bit like pulling teeth. Ouch. Oh, never mind. Oh, I forgot that we get the draw on the discard here. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you, game. What a save. Okay, Assassin goes down next turn. Poison hasn't truly gotten, like, earth-shatteringly problematic for us yet. I'm also going to throw another one. This next cycle could take as long as it needs. Got a double block set up for the next card as well. Hmm. Hmm. Pardon me. I was lost in thought. Uh. Yeah. Let's just double use it with the shield here, I think. Best setup I think I can hit by far. Nice on that double removal. Get past those as well. Nice. 63 corruption? What are we, round seven for the AI? Not half bad. All right, priest. It's just you and me. Okay.
Okay, well, I mean, look, if you're gonna decide not to attack, I'm gonna feel a little bad about how much I kill you here, so at least pick up a weapon, brandish it in my direction, make me feel okay about... No, okay, fine. Die, I guess. Um, apply one vulnerable, inflict damage equal to threat. No, I do think I'm cutting from that. Let's upgrade the diversion. Uh, then also... Where are you? Ping! Okay, that one... The, the ting didn't sound like a socket, but... Is, uh, is very much pulling something out of a socket. I've seen my fair share of Hanna-Barbera cartoons. To the Zoomers in the audience, does that sound like someone just saying, I, I used to watch the moving pictures in the, in the, in the, in the lantern box? I remember the first Metro Goldwyn Meyer film, back when it was only Metro. Chosen Champion, Dark Holders on Unholy King. I don't really think I have anything I have to change here, but I really like to be able to upgrade that card after we get it. Shame I know we won't be able to, but I would like it. Um, leave that sidestep in the hand for the next turn. Use a lot of extra energy. I think I will target a Dark Cortisan, especially the one that's buffing itself right now first. See, the next block card that I play is going to trigger twice, so the sidestep is going to give me two extra energy. Perfect. So I have the ability to Null and Void first. Discarding two cards. Okay, we don't need all of the block anymore, but it's fine. Um, actually, I'm going to use the Wither Shield instead. Save a lot of ongoing damage. Purge three cards? Sure. I should have checked my draw there before I perched those three. Thankfully, it is extremely defensive. I'm going to play this Curse Shield before I use the Battle Plan, because I would like it to be in the discard pile. Okay. Null and Void drops a Diversion and an Unleash. Another one, hard purge these two, and do it one more time. Ow. 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 Thank heck we have such a saturation of block in this deck. Mm. Everyone's already weak and vulnerable, so I don't think I'm going to be going with the band of resilience here. Okay, I've set them up so that two Dark Courtesans die in a oh, Wow, Soul Sacrifice. I didn't even look at the ability it was going to be using. Damn. Damn, damn. Dammity damn. This will be fine. I really didn't want to kill those on different turns because now there's a resummon. That said, I'm in so much of a better position at this point to be able to take them down that I don't find it. it's going to be threatening. I'm also going to get back up to full energy. This is a very, very, very basic kind of deck for this character, but it really feels like it hit what I needed it to. Let's null and void our way through two defenses there. Let's 
Let's make it only one kill to get the king now. And so nothing else just to limit the amount of targets on the fields. One, two. Get past both of those and then discard a unleash. Great. Took a while, but we got our perfect victory. My coach Nightmare Steed. Okay, so I'm actually going to have to target the Nightmare Steeds here first. But really, this shouldn't be bad. Do they bane your deck up that much? I don't remember them baning the deck up that much, so I'm not going to put the anti-bane card in here. But if it turns out they bane up that deck that much, I'm going to feel real silly about that decision. Just to increment our energy as well as the Band of Resilience. I'm going to play out that card there. Double trigger the next block that we draw. Nice. With a shield. Really good draw. Ooh. But no one has Frenzy at the moment. So it gets two stacks of weak on targets that aren't attacking this turn. So it's... Wait, no. Both of them are gaining Frenzy next turn. So at least it would rob them one turn of that. But this is so much more corruption. Corruption. I'm gonna have to scale eventually. Days of death. Okay, so never mind. It would have worn off anyway. Inflict one fear and two vulnerable. Both of them are doing that next turn. So I will have four turns of vulnerable. Oh, uh, and how's our fear? After drawing, you must discard cards equal to your fear value. Okay, I'm happy to discard cards. That's kind of my thing. So, very on board. Make the next cycle of the deck defensive by generating the new deck right now. That would be playing battle plan. We draw two cards. We generate the new deck by shuffling the discard. Get a new deck. Uh, and then these go into the new discard. I'm okay with that, actually. Mm. Sure, I'll get rid of the diversion. I mean, that's a pretty great turn in terms of gains. Incoming damage this turn is 18. I really would have expected it to be more than that. One, two, three. I mean, look, 50, the 50 does not get ignored at this point. Double block on the second block card that we play this turn. So I could go Diversion with a shield pretty happily. In fact, probably do. Then Null and Void over on the left with an Unleashed Darkness to follow it. One less target on the field. The Black Coach is just getting more powerful the entire time. Not that I have to target it yet. I may be in the point where I want to start keeping a Spirit Shield around at all times just in case. I don't think I'm going to do it just yet. Wait until the black coach is actually signifying that it is going to change here. One. Surely it changes to aggressive now. Like right now. Yeah, there we go. Incoming damage is 50. Hmm. First things first, I'm gonna... Lay out all those, and then I'm just gonna kill the enemy. <laughs> Two more 
upgrade points. I mean, look. <laughs> um, suffer three weak and three vulnerable. First couple each turn costs two less. That'll just guarantee we're all always on full energy. Nightmare Steed, add a volatile shield wall to your hand. Can't be purged. Block 15, block an additional one for each ability played this turn. It's really good. I think we definitely take on the efficiency first. High health and steady regeneration makes residual to gradual damage as it powers up. Me too! <laughs> wow, I didn't know that was your strat. Oh my god. You're gonna be such good friends. Double cursed shield, single null avoid, and then kind of just purge the rest of the hands. Could be a lot worse than 16. Hmm. This Wither Shield's looking really good too. With the shield apply slow first, yeah. So the first thing it applied was too slow, and then one week, and then it's slow in a week. Um, so null and void through some cards here. I think I'm actually just gonna hard block. Oh, sorry, hard purge. Scale a bit more again. Also, the deck, by necessity of removing or sifting past so many of our attack cards, is quite defensive at this point. Do I want to start throwing out 23s? 23s matter. Do they? You're for 5% of his max HP at the start of the turn, so basically 75% of my damage stays. Okay. Sixteen. Uh, we'll start with the null and void. Sixteen. Shield. Okay. Actually, going to drop double diversion here. That also gives me eight block next turn. It's really, really nice. Uh, I'm gonna use side, uh, uh, side energy here again for incrementing the band of resilience. And now it's just like two unleashed darknesses on the on the left arm. Yeah, I think so. Faster I can get one of them down, the far better off I'm going to be. Fine. Got a double trigger on our next defensive card, and that doesn't really have to be a you know, particularly powerful one, considering. Let's... Oh my god, that's so good. Alright, let's... Null and Void over here, discarding two Unleashed Darknesses, drawing a Battle Plan, discarding a Spirit Shield, using the Battle Plan, discarding... Two more Unleashed Darknesses. Purging with a shield for the ability to discard a Diversion, which is already full block for us. Saving one damage. Or more energy. we we'll go for the energy. I think we've got this wrapped up. With two attacks from killing the left easily. Great. Leave a single cursed shield in hand here, and then that plus a single uh, attack. 
to the left. I mean, attack. It's an ability. We've been making that point this entire time. It's not an attack. It's an ability. One, two, purge. Uh, gives me the ability to get a kill. Let's also start setting up. Haven't used the Nightmare Steed once because I really haven't been defensively threatened. But I still think I want it here just in case. It's a very effective just in case tool. Really starting to spend all of our energy here. And at this point, I am pivoting aggressive. So I drop defensive cards, and then two draws next turn gets us the kill, right? Yeah, that'll do it. Goodbye. A perfect victory, happily. Uh, every time you purge a card, block three. That actually seems also quite relevant to us. So does the Blessing of Weakness, though. If it's ever free, right, it, the, the amount of weak it gets is six instead. Because the dupe. I don't think we have as much trouble blocking as we will if we don't have something like this. And I think the extra source of vulnerability is really going to help us can, like, close out the fight. Yeah, let's just rage again. <sighs> A creature who punishes you for playing block cards, his damage can spike suddenly later in the fight. Okay, I think we're going to be going for the blessing of a quick step now. High HP creatures with the ability to go immune after being the uh, target of a number of attack cards, which they also prevent you from saving up in hand. Attack cards? What are those? <laughs> Seriously, I have no clue. I'd, I'd really like to know. I'm terrified. Oh, good lord. How many turns am I weakened for? Uh, that's fine. While I'm weakened, I can't gain rage. So what, I think? Yeah, so what, I think? Call to the stars is... Will increase its AP by a random number between 1 and 6. Oof. Uh, there's also weakened and haunted. Don't really care about that. Haunted still. Oh, sorry. Weakened still. Haunted. <laughs> Not great for us, but that's just how it goes, you know. Um, maybe I throw out the double with the shield here. Yeah. Try and reduce the incoming damage. I'm going to play Diversion just to get a trigger of the haunted off. Purge sidestep. I'm probably also purging the Unleashed Darkness, though. Another Rage Void Stone. Hell yeah! This hell yeah may have been, in some way, not entirely honest and serious. It's fine to drop that. Let's just double null and void this turn. Looks decent. Unfortunately, I can't hold cards for the next turn. I'm going to purge two more so that I make sure I have enough energy to play whatever volatile shield wall I should happen to generate because it seems like that's likely. With an attacking turn like that. go with a Cursed Shield into a sidestep. I'm going to purge the Wither Shield and then just double attack here over the left, which is enough block for me because the Fractal Feather. Hmm. I can do that again this turn, actually. 
null and void our way past. Actually, I should probably throw a diversion in there. Incoming damage next turn is 12. I could use that as a purging turn if I desperately need to. Okay, null and void again. I like the spirit shield being in hand right now. Apparently not enough to keep it, but I did like it. Ooh, nice blocks that turn. All right, we got one of them down. We've got one more vulnerable for another turn. So we actually have someone to pivot our attacks to. And yeah, this is completely fine. Null and Void drops a diversion as well as unleash there. We'll play a natural diversion, play Cursed Shield, one more purge. And yeah, the, the star call is going down pretty happily here. I'm gonna try and make sure that I leave the Band of Resilience on a good charge. <laughs> so rude. Oh. I'm going to take damage as a result. No, wait, I'm not going to take damage. It's fine. Null and void. Dropping diversion, diversion. <laughs> and then I can use Wither Shield. We did it. I'm also going to get back up as much energy as possible so that my future sifts are not the worst. Speaking of my future sifts not being the worst. Good, good, good. Let's unleash some darkness and then sidestep and then kill the enemy. Giving us the ability to release these souls at the void. Is there anything I really want to change in the deck manager? Hmm. Not really. This is a very, very base deck, right? Uh, it's, it's got a specific playstyle to it, and it is heavily utilizing the nulls and voids. But we we have a lot of cards, and uh, very, very few of them are in this deck. I, I recognize that. But at the same rate, I'd say it's not doing stuff. Not this battle. Uh, no, 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 no. I forgot again. It is manage deck, pop all those potions in there, and start the battle. Okay, first, it's, uh, first card played each turn is two less in cost, so null and void to get past two unleashed darknesses, battle plan to get past some more Unleashed Darknesses. Null and Void to get past some more Unleashed Darknesses. And then I might drop the Cursed Shield here so that I can play... Uh... Can I get back to full energy this time? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I think the actual correct play this turn is purge everything pass. No, I didn't get any extra energy out of that. However, I left myself on five for the sake of the unceasing gear, and also every card I purge gives me a corruption, so not worried about that. This is interesting. I mean, the enemy is doing fury this turn, right? So double with a shield isn't great because they remove two stacks of conditions at this. Wow, actually, when conditions are reduced, they remove them by three. I thought it was two. Okay, so yeah, it definitely doesn't matter this turn then. Purge that with a shield. I'll play three Unleashed Darknesses. Okay, I'll be totally fine already. We play you, purge you, attack and attack. 
Gets us our full block. Again, not having to use the shield wall, but we do have the excess energy for it should we need it. I just wanted to get a couple points of overcharge there. Nice. And it worked out pretty well because this sidestep is now good. I want both of those to be in the next cycle. Okay, I'm going to play Cursed Shield and then the Diversion before we play a Null and Void. Which I can use to drop these two Diversions in order to get some extra block for the next turn. Kind of set up. So going to try and skew defensive. Six incoming. Ow. Oh, never mind. It's only 24. Ow. Uh, we're not... Uh, well, I mean, we double trigger the next one that we played. Okay, I'm going to curse it and then double with a shield just to significantly reduce the... Yeah, the enemy's doing the fury that turn, so it wasn't going to matter at all. I need the extra energy. Yep. Just to be better prepared for next turn. I'm going to leave the Cursed Shield in hand and the sidestep here, I think, as well. of a turn right there. We've also got a double set up for the the next band of resilience. Okay. I could double, double spirit shield this turn if I desperately wanted to. I think it's time. I think it's time to double spirit shield and then like tend hard aggressive. So if I don't do that soon, I never get the chance to. God, I wish the enemy were vulnerable this time. That's so much less damage they're doing as a result of the double slow from that impact, so... I'm very happy with that. Sidestep and diversion here, just for incrementing the Blade of Resilience. And in fact, I'm even going to use the block for the same reason. Thirty-six. Start out with this Null and Void, dropping those two diversions, because we've also got damage next turn, so the delayed block is still good for us. There is so little defense left in that deck. I'm going to hold here. Ninety. Okay. I'm going to double play this Cursed Shield. Two, three, four. Get the Nightmare Steed to give us a shield wall. Just really still low. Okay, 
Okay, I got two turns to kill the enemy now. I'm like on a hard clock. It is just like exclusively damage. I, I can't win with exclusive damage. I need another turn. Incoming a 60 next turn. Gosh, it's only going to get worse. Oh, what am I going to do? How do I block this turn? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It's definitely going to be the double block. Drop both diversions for the sake of this turn. Purge 89-89. We actually might do it. We actually might. Hang on. Drop. Drop. One. And you gotta null and void him out of the game right there. It's the void itself. You have to. GG! Sir. Uh, that's our first on-camera victory with this character. And you know what? In honor of the ledger we didn't take, let's master this soul text right here before we go back to the main menu so that he can say that my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Vault of the Void. I am so glad that I took the Wither in that deck and had the upgrade on it and then, uh, like, was specifically focusing it for the, uh, for the double plays from the six because, ah, did that not just work? Just the treat. Pretty sure we couldn't have really lived for, like, another turn or two, so really right on time. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There is a playlist in the description down below with all of my content on this game, past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.